All right, everyone, the horns of hell are upon us. Apocalypse 3 is now looming large here on YouTube. Uh, you know, for those of you who are watching on there, for those of you watching on Daily Motion, not a problem since, like, the ad system's all, all fucked up anyway. And if you're watching on BitChute, it's like, I can't remember if I enabled them or not. I think I did experimentally. It's like, you know, whatever. Yeah, ads are fine on BitChute, maybe. It's an all, you know, alt media platform, basically, at this point. Um, Adpocalypse 3, YouTube indicating, link in the description to a tweet, uh, that now people can lose ad revenue based on the comments in their videos. And, and I guess they said, well, most people don't moderate their comments, and so, you know, people say this crazy shit, and so, you know, that, that can lead to your video. Our algorithms will scan through those comments uh, and determine whether it's suitable for advertisers. So now I am my brother's keeper. So if, if I wanted to take ad revenue, which I don't, I don't monetize my channel. I don't have AdSense set up. If I did, though, I would make less money intrinsically because, I mean, hmm, let me look through the comments sometime. No, you want to go uh, see something funny, just dig through the comments on any of my political videos, which I do not largely moderate. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking to myself, YouTube, therefore, for larger creators that make most of the ad revenue, you are expecting those creators to, to probably hire inordinate proportions of their own audience just to go through and, and be like moderators on live chat and, sh and shit like that. Like, I know you can make people channel moderators now. I, I don't know if it applies to standard comments or just to live. Uh, I refuse to do that because I want people to be able to speak freely, and they, they're responsible for their own comments. If you say crazy shit, if you say, like, bigoted stuff and someone flags your content and you get a strike on your account, that's not my fucking fault. I'm not going to flag it, but you know, I'm also I'm also not going to sit there and say, well, you know, I'm a free speech and stuff. Okay, there are consequences to its use. We know that. We've got to act pragmatically. You gotta moderate yourself a little bit in how you speak and, and say things online at this point. Shouldn't really have to. Most of it's pretty above board, it's just kinda edgy, but you know how it works. Part of this ties into a separate story. Apparently YouTube facing boycotts now from companies over the fact that creepazoids go onto like kids' channels and say weird shit. And I think Disney, which is surreal because of Disney's own pervert problems. <laughs> you know, Google, uh, who is it, Dan Schneider or something? I don't know, that might be Nickelodeon. I don't know. Anyway, it, it, you look look up uh, some of their weird problems, and then I think Fortnite. It's like Fortnite. You only exist because YouTube exists, so that's kind of funny. Here's what I would say. I've got an easy solution to this. Make YouTube 18 plus. Kick every kid off the platform for their own safety. Why should they be using YouTube anyway? There is a lot of edgy shit on it. No, if I had a kid, no, I wouldn't let him have a YouTube account until they're at least like 13, 14. Old enough to kind of understand the dangers and stuff like that. No, I wouldn't, I, like some of these channels, it's like, you know, you've got some some five-year-old math prodigy makes videos and the parents are like have the trust fund and the lawyers, are, they're making like, so you've got little kids making hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars a year. That's a little bit weird to me. And the thing is, YouTube fundamentally cannot both be family-friendly and a creator-friendly platform for everyone who's over 18. It's not possible. YouTube is trying to rebrand itself into a cable-style system where you have a partition between sort of, sort of the kid-friendly side and then you have the more adult content, uh, like, like political analysis, and, you know, some, some of the stuff that more adults would pay attention to. It's very difficult when you have an overall platform that caters to literally every demographic and every subgenre and niche topic that could possibly exist is there other than o openly pornography because, you know, YouTube doesn't allow that. Or, or I think they ban war footage now. So there's not a whole lot missing on YouTube. You can get pretty much everything else under the sun. Ban all the kids from YouTube. Problem solved. New York Times doesn't need to worry. The New York Times suggested that YouTube should get rid of its commenting feature altogether. Yeah, no thanks. I think that would kill the platform. I think that would be a, a, a bridge too far if YouTube were to do that. And then YouTube's own staff, like a month ago, there was a story where they're like, oh, well, you know, we've thought, we've talked a little bit about the possibility of removing the dislike function because it gets mis misused. As in, people don't like a video, they choose to dislike it. There are too many dislikes on this progressive content. We've got to do something about this. No, I'd say you should probably leave those two uh, functions alone if you want your users to continue using your platform. Because there are now viable alternatives within alt tech as well as others. So it'd be a dangerous time for YouTube if it were to do that. They'd lose a huge amount of revenue. But here's the, here's the other side of it. Look at it this way. Advertisers, again, have boycotted or fled YouTube because of controversy stirred up by the MSM. And this really is the goal. The MSM wants to put pressure on its competitors. YouTube's actions in the first two adpocalypses. V says this is adpocalypse 2.0. I beg to differ. There was a four-shock adpocalypse uh, initially 
where they basically ran out of ad revenue and people started seeing things decline and get all screwy and YouTube wasn't completely forthcoming. Months later, there was Adpocalypse 2, which is they introduced the system whereby they would start demonetizing 90% of the content creation on the platform. And, and, and you know, the appeal system's all wonky and stuff. By the way, Ryan Dawson getting banned off of YouTube as of yesterday. Uh, I've already contacted people about that. Uh, Tim, If Timcast sees this, bring this to his attention, uh, please, that that's happened. I did send him a DM. I know he's a man who can get things done. Um, and I think his appeal was rejected, but that's not always final. Because sometimes it really is algorithmically related, so you've got to go through things. Uh, and I know he's got some edgy content, but like at this point, I'm going to defend anyone from censorship, because fuck it. Uh, then you have here Adpocalypse 3.0. What has happened is that if Disney and Fortnite and some of the other big advertisers leave YouTube, there are now fewer ads to be served. That's why YouTube and Adpocalypse 2.0 changed the rules so people with under a thousand subs and under a certain amount of, of watch time and views couldn't actually monetize. I actually supported that and what, what I pointed out is if you get like 10 subscribers, you're not going to make any money off ads. It's just not going to happen. If you haven't reached at least that very minimal threshold, trust me, then you're not going to make any ad revenue. You'd be likely to get one check a year for a paltry sum. Because I think you have to get to $100 to get a payout, if I remember correctly. I know that's, I think that's the way it is on Patreon, too, actually. <laughs> Come to think, it's really funny, especially when they used to uh, get them uh, checks mailed and shit like that. You know, just get direct deposit. Um, you can use PayPal, I think, through that, too, now. Uh, uh, maybe. I may be thinking of a different website. Sometimes they all run together. I get so many different sites that I use, so many different services. Uh, but here's the thing. If you've got less ads to serve out, who is YouTube going to prioritize? Priority creators, the, the, the tame mainstream stuff, CNN and Jimmy Kimmel and so forth. And then larger creators that are independent, you know, the, the 100,000 club, people with a lot of subscribers as opposed to someone with 10 or 20,000. You know, smaller creators. They're going to they're gonna lay waste to them because they don't have enough ads to serve around and it's partially defensive. They have to prioritize those bigger partners. They have no choice. From, a from the perspective of maintaining the platform's integrity, it is going to, over time, become more centralized. YouTube in the future is going to be much more focused on corporate content and the larger creators who made it in the last generation. People who have achieved larger thresholds of popularity. The latter group is increasingly going to be attacked by the MSM. That's the, that, that's the group that they really want to go after. You'll notice, why would the New York Times or CNN, for instance, want comments to be gone on YouTube? Look at the view count on their videos when they upload, as opposed to the number of subscribers. It's a pretty funny threshold. Look at the number of comments on their videos, most of which are people telling them to, to you know, go off themselves and stuff like that. Mostly negative comments and not very many comments overall, as compared with creators who often have much smaller overall technical audiences, but a shit ton more engagement. Well, that's a lopsided thing, doesn't that? A, isn't that a credit to independent content creators and sort of a detriment to the corporate media? Of course it is. Or, or to corporate friendly, like, sellout brands on YouTube, like people that some, some company sponsors them and says, okay, well, you're going to make webcam videos that look like they're organically grown, but really they're just, you know, it's basically Monsanto style. There's a huge discrepancy. The amount of, like, the engagement that I get is considerably larger than the engagement on channels 10 times the size of mine that are corporate branded. Because a lot of it is they do a lot of botting, I think, <laughs> to tell the truth. They, they have the ads, they have multi-million dollar ad buy-ups and they can't even gain any traction. Because that's not what YouTube is about. But they're the ones that are going to have the ads always run. They're priority creators. Because they're bringing in the money, because they're paying for the ads and so forth. Of course they're going to get priority status. YouTube wants to deal with them because it knows they're corporate friendly, they're family safe and so forth. It's easier to work with them than the, with, with the last generation of large content creators, which, you know, we were raised in a much more edgy YouTube environment. So there is an adpocalypse looming right now. I think YouTube's explanation is crazy. I think they would, they'd be crazy to shut off comments. And the other thing is, I, I think the MSM is hoping that people will simply shut off comments for their videos to avoid getting demonetized. Whoops, sorry guys, you can't comment anymore because, you know, I'll get demonetized and I've got to pay my bills and shit. For some people, that's a problem. By the way, I'm still chuckling about the fact that I've never run ads. I think it was the best decision that I ever made in all of my branding. I'd rather you buy my book. You can donate or you can buy a book, and pretty soon there should be a website and merchandise. That's something that's actively now in, in the works. Um, I will never take ads <laughs> because I'm. I, it's just a bad idea. Like, it overlaps a whole new set of rules on you, too, and it's like, it's funny. Because some, like, uh, some of these people I sparred with, and they're like, well, I make just as much in ads as I would on crowdfunding. I don't see the problem, and I'm like, okay, well, now look, Adpocalypse 3.0, you think that's still going to be the case? 
you, you bet on the wrong horse, I think, altogether. That's about all. Peace out.